Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new BBB Skills webinar in the brand new format that we are using with our partners at Restream. And I've got the wonderful and amazing Grace Duffy here joining me this morning as we Hello. start to talk about the world of building trust and credibility with your live streams. And Grace, you know, uh, we're just talking about the fact that Facebook sort of went down <laughs> this morning, <laughs> as did oh, Twitter. Yes. But was it Twitter? Was Twitter twi affected twi where you were too? Twitter as oh well. God. So, you know, the beautiful thing about oh. this, Grace, is I didn't panic because no. I knew you and I had YouTube and we had mm -hmm. LinkedIn backing us up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this and is if all and if all else had gone away, we would have we would have found a way to get on Amazon Live and we would have opened <laughs> up a whole new audience for you. Like we are relentless up to 30 multiple platforms. Who, okay, who knew yeah. you need to go on a vaping channel in the Ukraine? I mean, we can do that. It's fine. We can do that. So we, we nothing's going to stop we us We would have today. found a way to get out there, definitely, wouldn't we? Yeah. It's like, guys, welcome to a new session. We're just going to give a few minutes to let everyone find us, get started and come into the sessions here this morning. But yes, who knew that we needed to? And Grace, that's a really good point. Amazon Live. That yes. is not an area that I've dealt into. And are we going to chat about that today? We can. I mean, I, I can I, talk I, about that definitely. I yeah. definitely think, especially with the number of us having audiences and authors and books and all yeah. of those things out there, I think there's definitely some reach over over the right. period in time and being able to do it. Now, I'm just going to do a quick Facebook check and make sure. Yeah, Facebook has got us live. We are Good. definitely all live over there. So the uh, evil monster that came in and ate Facebook this morning is gone. Uh, My and friend I, Robert W. Lee here. He says, yeah, yep, good evidence. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> like Facebook. What was so funny? Everyone was so shady over at LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn anyway, right? Like yep. that's, that's yep. kind of like where I go every day to check things out, talk to people. And there was just like, hey, how many people are here from Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had I did a mic session with my marketing circle members this morning, and the first thing they said was, "We I logged into Facebook, and the feed was the same as what I saw last night." Uh, so I went on to TikTok, and they gave me all the answers. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Is that not the truth? That's so amazing. Yep. It's so hilarious. So no, we are live. We are going everywhere. So let's get started this morning. I just wanted to double check, especially because we had some gremlins in. If you are here today, please do have a chat with us. Do engage. Do ask questions because that is what a skills webinar is all about. We are definitely here to help you grow, learn, and use some new stuff. So I know that Grace has a series of slides, but first of all, I suppose we should introduce Grace because not everyone knows who Grace is. So hi, Grace. Hi, I am Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I am the video content manager over at Restream. Restream is the platform we are using right now to multi-stream to all these different places and restreaming it right to you. I am a live streaming evangelist, live video host and podcaster, and I also manage our presence at virtual events, which of course, given the pandemic and the state of things, we, we did We've been doing virtual events. Uh, things are starting to open up here in the U.S. It's very interesting, but still a lot of people are doing hybrid events. So I manage our involvement in that. I oversee a daily lineup of live shows all across the Restream channels with live streaming experts. And I also produce and co-host my own show on social media marketing called uh, Social Media News Live. And I'm here to talk to you about building trust and credibility with live video. And I wanted to warm this up with like a quick story. So around this time last year, I was in the middle of looking for a job like many other people, right? And not to toot my own horn, but I have done basically everything there is in social media marketing, <laughs> digital marketing. Like I put the Travelocity gnome on my space. That's how long I have been in this industry, right? And Linda, I know you have too. Yes. So, you know, I have all this experience. I've run my own agency. I've worked for big brands. and I still couldn't crack that surface. And every single time I'd make it almost there and it would always go to someone that like was already in the company or someone they already knew or whatever, right? So someone that they already knew, like, and trust. Well, I happen to answer this really wonky uh, job listing on LinkedIn for uh, for Restream. It was very cryptic and it was for a sales position. And I was like, okay, what the heck? Maybe it's time to reinvent myself. Maybe this is a sign, right? So of course, being a live streaming platform, they immediately looked to see where I was online and they'd seen that I'd been hosting a show for the past two years. On, and so they got to see what I was like. In fact, they got to see the evolution of me from the early days when I had to like, 
belt myself into the chair to stay here, <laughs> look at the camera all the way to where I was. And even in my in the interview, of course, had was on the platform. We used Restream to yeah. use the interview platform. And my Amazon enabled voice activated device kept going off <laughs> in this job interview. And I was just like, well, I've gone and done it. Like, here's another one, right? Yeah. And I turn around and I rip that thing out of the wall. And I just like, and they thought it was so hilarious. They hired me. <laughs> Well, I must admit, I know a few people in, in the Restream team from other worlds, and it is. It is a fun brand to work with. And I think it's also a very human brand, with it, and that's really cool because, you know, obviously you know that I knew Patty from Think Giving yes. Days, and he's how we started talking to Restream. So, yes. uh, you know, actually, I think I almost should ping him a message and say, why aren't you here with us? <laughs> <laughs> why I tried pressuring him, but he's got that uh, sweet baby at home, I and, know. You, know, you know how it is so you know that that's my story of how live video and so I went from being this unknown to being known all just because of like one live video interaction one goofy stunt because I was myself because I was like oh here goes yep. and, you know they're really impressed with how well I handled problems and I'm like <laughs> okay well I guess you know like that, that's unexpected um you know I want to kick this off with why why would you do live video yep more than anything else that you could be doing, right? We're all busy business people. You were just talking to me about your email server or your yep. email uh, service that you're using. And you spent like, what, a month was it trying to vet the right one? <laughs> and I might have made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, that, you didn't make a mistake. You had a learning opportunity. I had a learning experience, yes. <laughs> I want to tell you why I think live video matters. First of all, it is interactive. It's engaging. You and I are having this really great conversation. Now, we already knew what we were going to talk about. We planned the show. But we're having just, all we're having is a conversation right now. And I'm- exactly. I, you know, it's, it's a good time. It's engaging, right? Look at all these comments that we see pulling in. Look at all the platforms we're going to. And let's mention, like, we did have a massive Facebook outage today, right? So yeah. Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever, right? Well, and you and I didn't, didn't matter because we had LinkedIn and YouTube to go to and Amazon yep. Live if we absolutely had to, right? So it is inclusive. It's getting people, you're getting, you're reaching people where they're at. And also... You know, not everyone learns the same way, right? Some people are more auditory, some people are visual, some people really, you need to walk them through step by step. And it was through live video that you can hit all of those marks, right? So, um, you know, no matter how engaging you are, someone out there is encountering this stream as a podcast. They're doing some like, you know, light work or whatever. They're listening to us, right? Some people are watching us intently. Some people are watching step by step. And and then, you know, when this is done, you could repurpose this content and turn it into a blog post for people that read things really well, right? So um, it, it hits all those marks with one piece of content that you and I are creating. And it's fairly quick. And I have proof. So we have this one edited video. It's three minutes long. It's a partnership in- between Descript and Restream. And if you're not familiar with Descript, it is an awesome platform where you can download your videos, upload it to their platform, and it spits out a transcript. Now, <laughs> you might have to do a little bit of editing. You might have to run it through a little bit of Grammarly. They always get my name wrong, but it is really, really efficient for creating yeah. those transcripts. Absolutely. Um, and we use it for editing where like, we'll find clips, and then you can just chunk out that clip, and it chunks out the video clip, and then you can distribute that as micro content or you know reels Absolutely. or whatever else you want to do. So this video took, this video was three minutes long that that we created this, right? And then we had, and then we had a live video that was uh, 57 minutes long with Guy Kawasaki. Guess which one took longer (laughs) to produce? (laughs) Would you like me to play it, play it? uh, Yes, you can guess. Ready to go, beautiful. Uh, which one? Oh, look, I'm going to say the 57 minute video is going to take longer to produce. Nope. The edited nope. video, because that was a video we had to record. We had to edit. Yep. It took like several days. And, you know, here's this, but what, whereas we have this live video of Guy Kawasaki, uh, talking about using yep. Restream and it was like, it took us an hour to do it. And then once it was done, it just lives there. We didn't do anything <laughs> else with it. It's there. And it's actually one of our most popular pieces of content today. Partly because yeah. it's Guy Kawasaki. And too, it's like talking about how he does, he does a live show and a podcast and he uses Restream to distribute it. And it was mostly just about his setup and 
how he's used live video in his yeah. world. And guys, you know, the big thing is, is that, look, I love Descript. We've used Descript in-house. There's another tool that we also use called Pictoria, which does very much the similar same thing. And actually, Grace, you know what? I'm going to commit to doing this. I'll take this episode. I'll run it through Pictoria. It will go onto the talk podcast, onto my podcast afterwards. But you know what it does for me? It takes out Hmm. the filler words. It takes out all the ums and ahs and I can edit out. Oh, I know. And Descript does the same thing. So it depends which tool you're wanting to use, guys. I um. And it also comes down to what works for your head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. So that is also a good tip, pictorial. Yep. So yep. Yeah. It's a so candy little tool. Oh, absolutely. So let's talk about building trust. So in building trust, we are providing real and authentic content. Now, I have to tell, I'm going to take a little detour here. I'll have you know, I went to Vid Summit this last week in L.A., it was, I was going to mention um, that. <laughs> yes. I have was, Andy. <laughs> oh, it was a really great event. But you had people there that were just now getting started with their YouTube channel, like where do I even find YouTube, yep. all the way to people making $10 million a month on their YouTube channel, like and everyone in between, right? Yep. And so you talk to a lot of these people and there's a certain type of marketer. We all know who they are. I'm not going to say <laughs> any names or any descriptions. But they were, you know, I met these people and let's say they're talking about like abundance wealth or abundance theory or yoga, Mm -hmm. what, right? And these are all fantastic things. But then, you know, they're talking about living their life a certain way and, you know, this is what it took to be successful. But then you start asking them like, well, how did you get into that, right? And slowly they start revealing, and it's not even a secret, they're not even aware of it, but they're talking about how they'd actually made all their money from real estate or investing or really cool things. And that's what funds their lifestyle. And it was just that little moment of like, you know, so I think what sets people apart is when you are building, and it, it goes without saying, you know, if you want to build trust, be truthful. <laughs> like, tell the truth. <laughs> and, I mean, you can tell me what you think, but it's just, I think that's a rare thing. In I think, the- yeah, I, I tend to agree. And guys, we'd love to hear in the comments what you think. Uh, you know, feel free to engage with us throughout this process. Um, but yeah, Grace, I agree with you. There's quite often a disconnect you know if you made your money Mm -hmm. in real estate say it it funded what I do now I quite often say in the process you know my corporate career funded what the the businesses and the organizations that we run right now Um, I'm not shy about it you know yeah we do some some free stuff and some good stuff and but reality of it is it didn't happen without the corporate career that with the big pay salary that that came before it Right, right. And living your life the way that you did and making the choices that you did, it all leads up to it, right? And so I think that is such a rare thing. And I mean, when people think about being vulnerable or being honest, you know, they think, oh, I got to talk to you about my unhappy life. I got to talk to you about my kid that's a delinquent. I got, no, you don't have to talk about all that, right? You, But be honest about your journey, about where you are. And it's okay to say, you know what? Like, I made a mistake picking this thing, this, this platform, right? Or, oh, I learned something. from it's, it's, This is an opportunity to do that. And live yeah. video allows you to do that in real time because this is all happening in a real conversation. Now, had I been watching this person's YouTube channel, I would have like, oh, yes, this whole life is about, you know, living simply and having a MacBook and a backpack. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> it also, you know, helped that he has a house on the beach. But, you know, so. That he brought pre to this lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, that he brought pre to this lifestyle, right? And it was through that live conversation, that interaction. And I don't like this person any less. It makes me just, you know, but it was a little bit of like, uh, I want to know the real you, right? And uh, meeting your leads wherever they are. Now, we've talked about the power of multi-streaming, but you're also talking to them where they are in their buyer journey. So we have a live show that we do every other Wednesday where it's just a live product demo simple, easy. We have people from our support team and our marketing team working on it together. And they just answer questions about our product. And one is so super valuable for us because we find out what are those things that people are asking for? What do people have trouble comprehending putting together, right? And what can we make easier for them? And it's also just anything goes like any, they can ask us any question and we don't shy away from it. It's right there in the live stream. You can see the comments the questions you can't run away with it run away from it which might sound scary but it's a really great way to connect with people that may be skeptical of your product or skeptical about how to do this or they're just trying to overcome that one hurdle of like you know how do they connect the camera right or how do they get the money and it's just some simple thing and like 
you get them right there, right? Like you are finding them where they're at in their journey. And then, you know, instant feedback loops and real-time interaction. So you find out exactly what people are thinking about your product, right? As they're encountering it, or, you know, when we're doing live demo, they can ask questions about what is that and how do I do this and how would I make this work? So um, that's also very powerful as well for, I think, finding out about your customer, finding out what they want and then how, what, like, if they're asking all these questions about this one topic, well, then you know what to do your next show about, right? You know exactly what exactly. to talk about, right? Or what should I be talking about more? What should I be blogging about? What should I be writing about? about exactly. And, you know, live sessions allow you to do that. I say with course creators, because you know I work with course creators a lot. Yeah. Your students will tell you what you want to teach. So if you turn up live and you do Q&As and you do all of that sort of stuff, it's gold mine for what your next course is going to be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. And yep. you get that get that interaction or you're just like, oh, I need to really tweak that up a little bit. Right. So um, let's talk about building credibility. So you boost your discoverability. The more places you're going live, the more people run into you and they start seeing you everywhere. Right. So this is a topic we talk about um, on our on the show that I, I do once a week on social media is like, how do you show up everywhere? Where are you everywhere? And they always say, I'm not, right? Like I'm really good at Facebook. I'm really good at YouTube. And so that might be their main platform or they might be doing a lot of more on LinkedIn, but they're streaming to everywhere else. So you're seeing them everywhere else. And it's that, it's almost like that power of word of mouth, right? That where people are seeing you more like other, like these sites are recommending you more. And also I think, I think I mentioned this at our last session, but uh, social media sites do, put a higher value on live content. They're wanting to push live Absolutely. video. They want to push content. So when you are doing what the sites are telling you that they want, which is more live video, they tend to push your stuff back up there, right? Uh, you become recognizable as a brand. You get people see a lot, see you, they see what you're talking about. They hear snippets, you know, here and there from what you have to say. And it all builds your brand equity and elevates you as an expert because not only are you an expert and you have the skills, you're talking about it. You're putting yourself out there. You're answering questions on the spot and people see how skilled you are, how knowledgeable you are about this business. Or even if you don't know something that you can say, you know what? I don't know, but that's a really good question. And then come back with the answer. Amazing. Right. Yeah. So even if you don't know the answer, it gives you another opportunity to come back and be like, actually, now I know. Right. Given my experience or or you can always give your thoughts on it, right? Like I always say, you don't have to know everything. Just what what do you, what's your opinion, right? And then yeah, exactly. create powerful connections. So every time I go live, you know, there's a bunch of comments in, in all the channels I'm going to. Those are immediate, immediate connections. And then you're able to go back and like respond to each of those comments, respond to each of those questions and keep that conversation going even after the fact. And so. engage. The more yep. you can engage, <laughs> it is it is huge when it comes through to that to that sort of stuff. And the other thing about connection, Grace, is live video. It's a little bit more forgiving. It's a little <laughs> bit more forgiving on you know whether the lighting's right, whether the makeup's right. And if you want to know, guys, I literally had to change location today to go live. Oh. So my background and everything is not there. But at least I can. At least I can pick up the device and I can move myself to wherever I am to mm -hmm. be able to go live and all of those sorts of things. And you are a little bit more forgiving because you are live, but it's also a more human to human connection. And if you know the stuff off the top of your feet, then that's huge when it comes to comes to that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm not in my stylized background today, but it didn't <laughs> stop us from going live, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. And I was telling Linda, I wasn't feeling so well right before this. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going live from the floor. Oh, well, <laughs> you're all coming with me. So <laughs> I would have taken thank goodness, like I pulled through. So, you know. Yeah. Um, we also want to talk about how going live is easy with the restream platform. All you really need is an internet connection, a social media audience, or you know what, if you haven't built one yet, pretend they're there, right? Talk to the, talk to yourselves, come up with a question. Uh, the, the best way that I've overcome this is you invite a guest, just like Linda, uh, very yeah. graciously invited me here. I invite many people if I don't know a topic and, you know, whether or not there's other people here or not, I'm talking to you. Like I'm having a great conversation and we can do whatever you want with this conversation afterwards. And so you talk, you're talking to the audience, whether they're there or not. Um, I'm going live from a MacBook, right? Like, yep. <laughs> and, and I happen to have a nice camera set up to it, but um, the, I've been using the webcam all day long and it's been just great. And then of course, 
the most important thing, the thing you already have, the thing you don't have to go out and get because you've already gone and gotten it, is your knowledge and your expertise. So live video allows you to very quickly connect your skill with people that are curious, with your skill with the people that need it, your skill with the people you can help the most right when they need it, right where they're at. Absolutely. And here's my little promo video. Let's see if it'll play. <laughs> if it'll play, figure it, otherwise I'll get it back up. Yeah. So this is a quick demo of the Restream Studio. Oops. Well, uh, of it, course it did. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to have the version I've got in, in here? Sure, Should yes. We, shall so we play that was, one? Yes, please. Thank you. I'll take it back to the start because we've tested this before. And I was uh, other thing about live video, guys, you can learn it. Yeah. started going there, there's your start <laughs> okay and well thank you so much there's, Linda. Well, there's your live we, stream lesson guys <laughs> you made it happen right so I, I wasn't sure if it was going to work so I sent it to Linda beforehand she uploaded it we practiced and there it goes so that was our uh, promo for the restream studio and as you saw in the promo that it shows you how you can go live to over 30 um, online destinations simultaneously. The major ones that I tend to go to are Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, it used to be Periscope, now it's Twitter. And then we use the RTMP source to go to Amazon Live. Now that's a app yeah. based. Tool. So you do have to like use, there are a few extra steps to it. But if you are selling products, if you are selling courses, or even if you're just you're not selling anything and you have to have a, a really cool mic or a camera or something, go on Amazon Live. And I think we've sold an iPad once, you know, like or we <laughs> sell quite a bit with every show that we do. Um, because if you go live and you go enough, people are always asking, like, what is that microphone you have? What camera are you using? Yeah. What light do you have? Right. Put those in there. Right. Whenever we have a guest and they have a book, we put all their books in there. If they have um you know, they'll mention a product like it's really easy. We just stick it in there, right? And and then you get the you know Amazon um, credit. Oh, right? we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to come back and do a whole session on Amazon Live yeah. and how people should be able to do it because I have lots of authors and I have lots of people who are selling stuff on Amazon. So in our market, and it's a completely different topic, but I reckon it's a great one to talk about because it's oh, a little channel and, channel oh. I know. Yeah, and it's it's mostly untapped. A lot of people are going to it because it's very QVC like, yeah. Uh, you know, in that live selling, but you know, there's people, there's all kinds of shows there. There's baking shows. Um, my co-host Jeff used to do a wood carving show, so he'd yep. do it on there. Um, you know, we have um, two of our friends, uh, Jim Fuse and Chris Stone. They they're deal casters, and that night they do deal casters at night, which sounds kind of shady, but it's just deal casters <laughs> but at night. I don't know. So they just talk about products, right? And they're not really sell. They have merch, but they're not really selling anything that's them. Like their whole show is this Amazon show. So check them out if you're looking yeah. for a good example of how. And to guys, do it. it's worthwhile getting into because Amazon have bought out podcasts. They've bought out a number of things, and you know, I know I put our podcasts through Amazon, and we're getting this through there so you just never know where your yeah. audience is hanging out and this is what restream does it allows you to <laughs> share your story no matter where your audience is so you're not having to choose one platform you can choose multiple platforms and that's what I do love about restream yeah absolutely and real-time challenge management so before this Linda sent me a link to pair my channel so pairs is a new product that we just released and I'll try to give it the very simple, I'm so excited about it, I get tongue-tied, so I'll try to <laughs> calm myself down. 
So what happened was Linda planned this webinar. We've planned it for months ago, actually, months yep. ago, actually. And and right before the live stream, she sent me this link that she generated and it allowed me to add my social media channel. So I added my LinkedIn and my Twitter. I could have added all of my channels if I really wanted to, um, but I wanted to just test this out. And um, we've been testing out. It's been really successful. So now we are going live, right? So for up to 10 guests, if each person pairs, then it's going to all of those channels, right? You've just 10 x your distribution right now exactly. just by going to your pairs channels. And there's no there's no sharing passwords. She didn't have to make me an admin in her groups. I didn't have to become a manager in her face and her YouTube. She didn't have to come be a manager on my YouTube account. We're just going live. We're just, that's it. Um, I think at one point we were experimenting and we had 21 people pairing their channels with just, one of our shows. It was absolutely amazing. And look, Grace, I think this is a really huge advantage, if, especially if you are using Restream. And I don't think that, you know, it's not something I've used prop, Restream properly for right now. But if you are using Restream to record your podcast and you're doing your podcast live, it is an instant way to get your guests to share your podcast and your areas to your audience by streaming, by doing mm-hmm. the video stream direct to all the channels and getting it out there and having that conversation. Now, yes, you might perfectly edit the conversation later for a, for a podcast or you might leave it as human as I tend to do, ah, have it as human as it needs to be. But it's a really cool thing that you can actually delve into and be able to reach their audience straight away. So you're not only building your profile, like lots of people do podcasts to build their profile, let's be honest, uh, but you're actually getting your profile out there to your guest immediately using pairs. And that's a look, it, I got very excited. Rob Galvin and I <laughs> used pairs last week. So, <laughs> well, I'll do you one better for your, uh, cu- your clients that are course creators. It allows people that own Facebook groups, YouTube groups, private groups to ha- invite you to be a speaker in their groups. And so you have an opportunity to present in their groups. Yep. You don't have to be a member of the group. You don't have to be an admin in there. And it's just, you, it allows you to be, be a guest in someone's private group and be a guest speaker or yeah. invite guest speakers to your group. Um, and then for those that own businesses, it's been really great for co-marketing. So we actually have a co-marketing campaign that we are um, launching. I don't know if it's gone through or not yet, but um, so it's us restream and another popular brand and we are doing a, an announcement together and we are sharing pairing our channels and sharing it to all of our channels all at once so you're not waiting I, you know we're not having to say oh go over to our partner or come over yeah. to our channel you're seeing this partnership blooming and it's just two companies working together in a co-marketing campaign Ooh, it would be very exciting to see yeah so it's a good way to partner with uh partner with different brands mm-hmm. We also have dynamic chat, which we are experiencing here today in this conversation. So everywhere that we are going live, those chats are coming in and we're able to see them. We're able to respond to them right away. You can stream up to 10 participants. So it'll, you know, just you, me and like eight other people could be on here all at once. It seems a little chaotic. And then for the podcasting, you're talking about podcasting. We also have a split track audio recordings, which means that if... My audio is really bad, which it was one day because I was using the wrong microphone. <laughs> it happens, right? Um, you know, my ed- our editor was able to go in and like bump up my sound so that we were e- at even levels. And you could also have live. Um, like the, the host also has live uh, audio control. So if I happen to be coming in here and I'm super loud, Linda can just turn me down. Yeah. You know, doesn't you, doesn't you have to say, hey, Grace, step away from your mic. She just turns me down, frankly. <laughs> exactly. Full and it's control. great. Yeah. And you have a fully branded experience. We've talked about adding your own colors, your logos. And we just introduced something called brand folders. It's something we're still experimenting with. So if you're like me and you go live in multiple, uh, you have multiple shows or you work with multiple brands because you're a marketer or you are a brand and you have different lines of business, you can create all of those creative assets, the backgrounds, the overlays, the colors and everything and save them into brand folders. So you're not having to scramble or find things you go, everything is really organized for you. So that's something that we're experimenting. So it's everything you need to go live, successfully broadcast right from your browser. Yes. So what's your favorite feature in Restream, Linda? Look, for Restream for us, what, where, the, where the change game change was, was to, to be able to go to our audiences where they are. 
So we mm-hmm. can go to our LinkedIn audience, we can go to our Facebook audience. And I'm noticing in my Tips Tuesday session, which was, you know, always a, a Facebook Live session, that I'm getting a few people from my LinkedIn in space, which I would have never gone, okay, well, I should be doing a LinkedIn Live on a regular basis because I tend to work with small business owners and why well, I have a great next, you know, corporate network and great connection on LinkedIn with a lot of other people, I would have gone, it's most probably not a good use of my time. Mm. However, what I can do now is take that se- series and take that session that I'm running and deliver it over that way. It means consistently I turn up on YouTube once a week, you know, it's, I'm there on a Tuesday and I'm there sharing my stuff. Um, but, you know, look, Restream has bought into even the ability for us to link this live stream into our Eventbrite events. So okay. this is this is a free webinar, but we've got an online registration and we've got it linked into the Eventbrite event so that people can get the event page later. And if they don't get, get to watch it, they get the replay link through yeah. there. And it's all about those sorts of things. And I was actually going to talk to you because I noticed a couple of comments coming up about, you know, virtual and hybrid events and using Restream as, as an event partner. Like we are, we've looked at, you know, embedding restream streams and those sorts of things along the way. But there is so much that you can do. Live streaming is one thing, but you can take your event and you can live stream it. And I know there's going to be, because I know my marketing circle members as well, it'll be sitting there going, well, how do we protect this if it's a ticketed event? How if we don't want it to be out on YouTube? How do we share our restream with someone else? Well, I mean, on YouTube, you can create unlisted listings, yep. right? So yep. They would have to have a link to get to it. And yep. LinkedIn, I know you can create ticketed events. They've been trying to perfect that. And so you can create private events in which they would have to log in the same way yep. you do with Eventbrite. And then Facebook is doing the same thing too. Like you could yep. go live into a private group and pay to have access in that group or pay to have the access in the event. I know that in this past year, Facebook has really been working on more ticketed virtual events, seeing, you know, obviously yep. what had gone on with the market. Um, And that's something that you can find ways to create a private closed event. Um, Another cool hack that I heard about, so I'm not going to take credit for it. I'm just going to share it. Is that you can actually go live to your Facebook page and then, you know, and then be like, hey, if you want to catch the rest of this, go to our group. You can catch the rest of the stream. And then you just go in and you turn off the page and you continue going live in your group. And then That's people, as cool. people are going in and, you know, they can, they can, uh, and it builds that sense of urgency, that sense of, um, I want to be there, that sense of, oh, here's something extra, right? And then you're providing them, you're, it gives you that opportunity to provide something extra for your special community and to nurture that community. Cool little tip. <laughs> yes, it is. And then the same thing, I think you can do the same thing if you want, you could go live to multiple YouTube channels or whatever. So you can, you know, say, hey, come over here to to this YouTube channel and help build a subscriber base to that one too. So there's a lot of different hacks, That's, right? A lot of different ways. Uh, we're going to, we're going to have to do a session on hacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> little, but a little live streaming hacks, you know, it's, it's definitely, you and I could talk for ages about how to, how to hack your marketing and that sort of stuff with live stream. Uh, but live streaming guys is, when we talk about this, it's about giving the algorithms what they want. Now, mm-hmm. every social media algorithm out there is telling you now they want community, especially Facebook, uh, but YouTube are the same. They're all promoting community engagement and community involvement. And what promotes conversation better more than turning up for your people? Yeah, I don't know. Like, this is exactly it. They want to have access to you. Right? It's it's not uh, gone are the days when it's like send a corporate email or, you know, people have gotten savvy. Like, people are really savvy. So I know that there's some... Uh, there are some marketers out there that will pre-record a video and then post it as if it's a live video, pretending it's live. But people know that you're not actually there, right? And there's nothing wrong with doing pre-recorded videos. You can schedule pre-recorded videos through Restream. But people are savvy and they want to have access to you. Uh, that's that's something that uh, social media has brought. Like if you don't get a, you, no one's calling, you know, but if you said that you don't respond to their email, they're onto your Twitter, they're finding yeah. you on Facebook, you know, they're looking for you on, on Google places or they will not stop until they want to find you. So why not just go to them and be there for them? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing that I really um, find interesting about live video is that, you know, you're, we're talking about that sense of urgency. So with this live stream that we do for Restream every other Wednesday, I, without a doubt, I send out the emails and then I always get, is this going to be a replay? Is there going to be a replay? Because oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a given, right? That it's good. And it's that sense of like, oh my gosh, it's two in the morning, but I'm going to get up if this is the only time that I'm going to see. Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. And it's like, one, it's amazing to find people that love you that much. Mm-hmm. And two, it's just like, yeah, there's going to be a re- replay. But, you know, you don't really hear anyone being like, man, wish I could see that Facebook ad again. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, did you see that commercial? Like, where, man, I really wanted to see that commercial again. <laughs> You know, like the way they do with live video, there's just something about it that that in the moment catching, you know, not necessarily the flubs or the mistakes. It's just being human and being there with you. People want to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So the key takeaways are, are, you know, everything starts with a conversation, just like you and I are having, just like me looking for a job, just like your uh, clients looking like looking for their customers. It all starts with that conversation. Why not let that conversation happen in real time, in an engaging live video with HD audio and sound right from your browser? You just said that you were able to pick up your studio and take it somewhere else. Now it may yep. not be ideal. It may not have your setup, but you did it. You got yep. up. You did. You left. You got it. You got <laughs> it set up. You know. Um, you know, we've learned that video editing takes more time and is more consuming than go live. I also manage our output of video tutorials. Trust me, I'd rather go live. <laughs> and then <laughs> you hand me a script and I turn into like a, you know, right, I don't know, I turn into a turtle yeah. or something, right? Like I, I don't even know how to talk. I have to like, I have to redo scripted lines over and over again to where I'm sending our video editor, like here's four versions of me saying hi. You decide which one sounds like a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> so true, though. <laughs> exactly. Um, authentic content builds trust and credibility. If you are honest, if you are truthful, if you show them all the little warts and the rocks in the road and the journey it took you and where you're at, people are going to trust you. They're going to believe your story. They're going to understand where you, how you got to be where you are and they're going to respect you for it. And then also going live on social is easier than you think. Just go live from your browser. Um, I have a special thank you for being here today. It is a free month of Restream Professional. You can get that. Here's the link. I'll send it to um, I'll send it to you, Linda, so you can share it with yeah, your group. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And you can use Course Creators to check it out as well. It's the same link that we used for the Course Creators, but yeah. it is allows you to give everyone a chance. So thank you. Oh, and here's where you can connect with me. I am on LinkedIn. You can find the Restream YouTube channel where we keep all of our live video shows, our live shows, and our product demos and tutorials. So find us at Restream.io. And then we also have a fantastic Restream community. So if you are interested in live video and you're looking to get started or you're looking to level up where you're at, join the community. It's a great resource. And we have some incredible people there. Uh, This is just a lineup of our guests, Owen Video, Ian Anderson Gray, um, Bradley uh, teaches, Bradley Vincent teaches about how to create graphics. So all these really cool graphics you can create. like. I don't know the first thing about designs. So, uh, hey, if you can show me how to do this in Canva, I'm all there. I'm your girl. I'm there for you, right? (laughs) Beautiful. Thank you so much, Linda. But I'm here to answer any questions you might have or anything you want to chat about. Fantastic. I'm going to bring Grace back up onto the main screen. If anyone's got any questions, please pop them into the chat wherever you are, because that is a beautiful thing about live streaming to multiple channels. You can chat to us now and we can have a chat. And I'm not having to flick between 100 browsers <laughs> when we run a live stream. And it's such a, it seems like such a little thing. But when you flick between multiple browsers on more than one occasion, you can understand what, what that is like going through the process. So does oh anyone God. have any questions for Grace today? Well, I have a question for you. Tell me how you got started with live video. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm the social media. You know, I'm the organic girl. There was a new toy. I played with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that's really what it was. You know, I've been training and been working in the Facebook marketing space for quite a long time. You know, the business business community was 33,000 members. You know, even this morning, I did a live update to remind some people about the group guidelines uh, because it's one of the quickest ways to get the message out there. And I know the algorithm is going to serve it incredibly well. So I got into live video literally doing and slightly technically did not realize I was breaking Facebook guidelines. But, you know, see, even those of us who know Facebook can break their guidelines. I was doing a Friday night cheers session, which technically I had a glass of wine in my hand, everyone related to. However, technically you shouldn't be doing things with alcohol and promoting the consumption of alcohol on Facebook. So 
backed off that one really quickly, but managed to get it. You know, it went for it went for about a year, and people were literally turning up every Friday night to have a drink with me. And that's the reason I did it was to start that bit of that you miss in business life. You miss that that catch, catch up situation. You miss the opportunity to have a drink with your fellow business mm-hmm. owner. So that's what we done at that stage. Let my lesson went. Okay, let let's cut that series down before you know I get my my wrist slapped, uh, <laughs> and um, you know the Facebook gods come and maybe take take the page away so we we did that um now I didn't remove the content I left the content there because it wasn't the primary goal but I went okay lesson learned don't do that um and then we started this year no late 2020 we started the tips Tuesday session so tips Tuesday is literally about coming live and I share marketing tips on a Tuesday morning um whether it's live whether it's it's all live stream for me um Mm -hmm. Because once again, I can just talk. You pick, I pick my topic off the top of my head and I can talk about it. You know, yeah. that's the beautiful thing about it is half the time now I'm like, do I have to do a pre-record? I really don't want to. I want to see what people are doing, you know. And the beautiful thing about live video is if you get there and people have got other questions, you can answer them on the spot. You can mm-hmm. change the topic or change the situation. And I suppose I've been doing live webinars and live teaching for a long time. So that's where the transition came across. So that's, yeah. that's where we're at. <laughs> so you were on Facebook Live, let me see, it launched in uh, pretty much. 2015. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. As soon as it was there, I was there. <laughs> Let's be <Okay>. really honest. <laughs> I remember going live, uh, you know, we, we went live. There were all these like platforms where you could just go live and you yep. had to sign up and get the subscription. I mean, yep. we do that with Zoom now, right? But there were yeah, other exactly. platforms. And I remember we had to do something called Wirecast where we would like, like literally like it was almost like those old phone operators where you're just like plugging in each of the platforms and we had to have <laughs> someone else do it for us because god forbid we do it ourselves right <laughs> no, exactly <laughs> oh my god well another uh tip that i have for people that um might be nervous for going live or whatever is to have a pro a co-producer so you would share your credentials and they would be in the behind the scenes so right now you know you brought me up but you know my presentation is still behind the scenes if we'd had someone else in the back we could do behind the scenes and they can run the show for you yeah so they there are remote live producers out there they can even do it remotely if you you know they don't have to be in the same room as you to run your show and then you do your run of show and they manage all that. And all you have to do is show up and be yourself. You don't have to do anything. You know, you don't even have to powder your nose. Just be who you are. <laughs> <laughs> turn up. And you know, you technically up. could turn up in your pajamas as long as the yeah. top half is presentable. Although if people want to see you in your pajamas, it works well. Robert was I just mean, saying real-time feedback is valuable. It is. Yeah. And especially in the pandemic and especially because we aren't doing as much face-to-face stuff now, the audience sometimes turns up. I mean, you, you Get, you we and I both talk and we both present on stage and you know when you get through in front of an audience and you're like here's the topic I prepared and the audience looks at you deer in headlights and you're like okay we're a little bit advanced for these guys we need to dial it back a bit so you ditch the powerpoint or you ditch whatever you need to because the audience looked at you deer in headlights yeah. the ability about live stream is maybe we don't get the deer in headlights but we get a little bit in chat about what do you mean about this or what do you mean about that um yeah and it's really important to see those moments in time because otherwise you spend, you know, as I say, this in course creation or business or whatever we're sitting in, you spend a massive amount of time creating content that is either not the audience isn't ready for or they're too advanced. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. And I'm just seeing Robert's Coast Powder, you know, it's been a while since he heard that phrase for sure. Well, uh, yeah, well, I don't know about you, but I keep a pow- I keep powder on my face because you never know what I'm going to look like, right? So I'm just like sitting here powdering my face before I get on here. Otherwise, otherwise, I'd blind you with my shininess, Robert. So <laughs> we keep we keep you shine free, Robert. You know, it's a, a thing that maybe the gentlemen of the world don't understand. <laughs> they need to powder, otherwise, you look shiny. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So what are some of the things that you do before you go live? Like, do you do you take a moment? Do you yodel? Like, what do you do to, go live, to relax to go live? Do you remember how, I was, Grace and I were talking at the start of this about Tips Tuesday session. My intro video for Tips Tuesday is a tune that I actually like to dance to. So part of my theory is, you know, you get up, you get, you get excited, get the mojo. It's about preparing yourself to jump on stage and it is no different to jumping on stage so you normally say to my clients when we're talking about guest speaking or that sort of stuff 
get ready to jump on stage. So listen to the music. Don't listen to the people around you. Don't listen to the audience. Don't chat to anyone else. Give yourself that time to get into the mindset. Um, Part of our live streaming or our our live teaching process is to do a sound check beforehand, you know, make sure the sound's all right because the last thing you want to do is find out when you go live that your audio isn't connected or something isn't right along the way because that's disastrous. And I've had guests turn up to to live webinars or live training sessions and they've popped up in the last three minutes before you do to go live. And not only is your heart racing because you're like, well, I don't know this topic. God, help me if I have to talk about it. Um, but you're also, mm-hmm. if their mic isn't connected or they need to do something, they don't have time to do that. So I'm going to say about being a really good live stream guest is make sure you turn up in time to do sound check. Uh, it's really important. It really makes sure that you are there. I have currently four sets of microphones sitting here with me going, which one was I going to use? You know, which one's the right one to use? A couple of sets of headsets. So you have your backups, have that sort of stuff. It's really important. Um, And, you know, we hit the stage yesterday and I said, my poor little darling laptop's maybe getting a bit old. It can't run the camera and the USB mic. So I've got to go back to my lapel mic, which technically gives me better audio anyway. So I should be doing that. Um, But it's all just different things that, you know, the laptop's just gone, well, if you want graphics, you have one or two things. You can have graphics or good audio. Which one would you like? Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, it's just sometimes that's how your tech goes and you go, well, you know, okay, graphics it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a guest that uh, didn't show up. Like on, I think he had thought it was a different time or he lost track of time or whatever. He showed up 30 minutes into the show. Now we had... <gasps> You know, we'd been, re- we'd rearranged the show because we'd, so we talked about all the topics and when it finally came in, we were just like, oh, okay. And I mean, my first concern was like, I hope you're okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, um, but we were able to just readjust, right? And our audience just hung with us because we were able to just talk about different things. We ended up talking about the tools. And so it also helps to have some topics or some questions in your back some pocket. Backup so yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when all else fails, we talk about like, hey, what we talk, you know, so we rely on the news for our show. And so we just talked about the news that was going on that didn't have anything to do with the topic we're discussing. And the guest felt so horrible about it. You didn't even want to like browbeat. <laughs> you didn't want to. No, exactly. You know, like they felt, he felt so bad, so bad. In fact, I ran into him this weekend and he's still just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so and sorry. Like, yeah. That was like six months ago. Like I've, I've screwed up about 600 times <laughs> since then. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And that's so. the biggest thing, guys, is, you know, I say this to, and we do, and Grace would know, we've sent, I've sent multiple confirmation messages and those sorts of things yeah. to to really make sure that you make it, the guests have the, the best opportunity to make it to that live stream. And especially this time, I've most probably been a little bit more pedantic because I'm like, I don't know how, Restream's not going to send her a panelist reminder like Zoom does. How do I, how do I manage that? Uh, so I've been, you know, just checking in, making sure she's got everything she needs, making sure she's got the pair link, making sure she's got all of that sort of stuff. But the reality of it is, if they don't turn up, you know, we've had it, we've been doing wet live webinar training since 2016. So that's a long time to admit that you've been doing live training. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't turn up, just fall on your sword. You know, so I normally go, I've got a backlog of presentation topics that if I need to pull one, I just pull one of mine and go, well, I guess he's in here today and, we, you know, for example, our next skills webinar is on distribution agreements and the legal the legals of it when, whether you should have them within business. Now, I'm no lawyer. I'm definitely not going to talk about distribution agreements. So if our guest isn't there, I'm going to go, well, we're talking about distribution agreements. Um, so you guys want to boost your sales. So I've got three presentations on sales. Which one would you like me to present today? <laughs> <laughs> what but, would you like to hear? Right? <laughs> yeah, which one would you like? And I'll pull that one up if the guest didn't show. You know, that's what we're going to go. What do I have that matches the audience? Mm-hmm. Um, and bearing in mind that sometimes the audience will go, wow, well, that was pretty cool. You picked that up yeah. and you were able to do it and it's all fine. Uh, so please don't stress in the, in the, inside that space. So Grace, I'm going to, you obviously started in live stream a long time ago and, you know, Wirecast was bef- before my live streaming time because, you know, hey, technically, you know, I was that a little bit challenged. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't do it. I had someone else do it for me. I just showed up. So. <laughs> but what got, you start, what got you started in live streaming? Uh, I was the producer of this live news show and I was conducting all the news stories and writing the show and, and there was an opportunity to go live and they were like, well, you're the host. I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> like, I, I really, 
<laughs> no, and they basically just said, well, if you want to keep working here, you're going to do this, right? They said it nicely, but that was implied. It was so, implied, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I basically just um, buckled up. I have a chair with like arms on it. So I put the arms down so I wouldn't wander off. <laughs> and, uh, and I like, I, I have to be tethered. So I have these uh, uh, headsets. So I'll show them to you. So they're, they're just, yeah. uh, you know, go behind the ear. And this is hardwired into my computer because I get really paranoid about things that are um, uh, Wi Fi, like Bluetooth, right? Because yep. just whatever. So I, I, yeah. Yeah. So I was basically just tethered to my computer, arms down, couldn't leave. And I was just like, I had nowhere else to go but live. So <laughs> that was it. Um, that first time was a little rough. Like the co-host and I were just talking over each other a lot. And then over time, we just perfected that cadence. And I had to work on... Um, yeah, you know, because we also distribute it as a podcast. And so when people see you and they see you laughing or you're talking over each other, they don't really notice because they see the interaction, right? They see that you're not actually being rude. You're just talking over each other and you're just really excited to, you know, yeah. pile on this conversation. And so I had to be mindful of of like laughing like this or showing facial gestures rather than making noises or just yeah. being quiet and not, you know, and also uh, how to guide a guest. So how to guide a guest if they end up going long or, you know, just little cues and stuff. So that's how I got started. But mostly I've had, a, I've been very privileged to have great guests, great co-hosts and great support. So I've had it all. So, and then I eventually, uh, that uh, transitioned into working for a live streaming platform. So now I go live pretty frequently, whether I want to or not. <laughs> But she's no longer strapped into the chair. It's okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did put the chair arms up so I can move around. So I don't, yeah. God, well, I reckon, Grace, we ran this up maybe with, just to make everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. And we've spoken about, you know, Grace talked about being strapped into the chair, but, you know, the live stream bloopers. Uh, I actually have one of my top performing TikTok videos at the moment is one about leaving your bloopers in there, about leaving your bloopers in your course creation journey. And, you know, if you trip over a word, you know, the four versions of hello that Grace was talking about earlier, sometimes just have the awkward hello, have those moments that people are going to be out there because they're going to help each other, help each everyone through that process. So I remember one and I'm going to, get, I'm going to give this to everyone because I've done it before and it was a Facebook live stream and I thought I ended everything. And then for 30 minutes later, it continued playing with all the home noise, all the background noise, all of that sort of stuff. So if you make a mistake, I can guarantee you there's been someone else out there that's made it. Yeah. So don't beat yeah. yourself up for it. <laughs> no, you really don't. I, I started a live video once and the our neighbors were putting a new roof on their house. So I literally ran up there looking like a crazy person, you know, the lashes, the hair and everything. And I was just like, can you please go roof on the other side <laughs> for like, 30 minutes and they all they called the um owner and he came over and he's like ma'am is there a problem i said no i just have this live show and i just need you to be quiet for 45 minutes i'll buy you lunch and, just, just, and they're like no it's fine we'll just roof on the other side i was like okay so, Perfect. <laughs> so i've had to do that and then um yeah blue, I, I i always trip over my words i always say the wrong thing and then my co-host has a hard time saying uh, names you, like even if it's a normal name he has a hard time so I've made it so that I say all the names <laughs> like he knows the names of our guests but like if we're talking about like the CEO of such and such company or the head of marketing or whatever like he always trips on so I always end up saying those names and so there's a little bit of finessing when we're writing the script and when I say script we just really do like a run a show where we have our talking points and our topics to lean on but for the most part once the conversation starts going it's no different than talking to someone in person. You're just, you know, making that intense, awkward eye, you know, <laughs> I, eye contact with the camera. Eye, eye movement and, yeah, give, really like looking like you're a bug eye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Grace, it has been amazing to talk to you today. I'm Aww. hoping our community has picked up a few tips about building the credibility of live stream. And I hope they've laughed along the way with us throughout that process. We do have one or more skills webinar rounding out 2021. Oh, my God. Am I saying rounding out 2021? It's a bit ridiculous. I it? know. 
It's a bit crazy to say. So our next skills webinar coming up is with Stephen Brown, who is our resident IP lawyer. And if you've not seen it, uh, I will pop the skills link back in. So if you head to business, business, business forward slash skills, that will take you directly to our um to our skills webinar. So I'm just going to pop that in there now so that everyone can see it in chat. It'll actually take you directly to all of our feeds, actually all of our events, workshops and webinars along the way. So business, business, business forward slash skills. If you need it, it should be up on screen now so you can see exactly where you need to go to. Um, Okay. From that point of view, that will therefore mean that you can jump into Stephen's webinar. He's an IP lawyer. Uh, he's going to talk about distribution agreements and whether they're a friend or a foe. So if you're looking at being able to use a distribution agreement or you're looking at being a distributor, that's a good one to come into. And the reason that we round out skills webinars in October is because in November 25 to 27, you're going to spend three days, or 12 lucky business owners get to spend three days with Clive and I working on their strategic planning where we look at marketing planning, business planning, goal setting, KPIs, all of that for three days in November. And then, you know, surprisingly enough, we take December Oh, we don't take December off, but we take December off live training <laughs> and we have a bit of a break while everyone moves into Christmas and those sorts of things. So it's been a pleasure to talk to Grace today. Oh. The replay will stay up in our channels. It will stay live. That is a bonus of this session. And if you need to look at Restream, we'll, Grace and I'll put the link in for you. I'll put the link into chat and I'll put the link in the comments everywhere later to make sure that you can take advantage. But if you even just head to Restream.io and use the code Course Creators, it will help you get started into the world of Restream and get you started streaming out there. So my top tip leaving everyone today on Restream is and stream live streaming is be consistent. Choose once a month, choose once a week, choose once a fortnight, whatever it is, turn up consistently for your people and allow them to get that connection with you. Grace, what is your final tip? I say get started. I know that that's kind of yep. like everyone says get started, but trust me, your first video, the if you go to the first video of anyone's YouTube, if they haven't already hidden it, it's going to be hideous, right? Like You can go it's see mine, be, guys. <laughs> you can see crap. mine. It's terrible, right? So I just, I, I mean, I think the more that you get on there, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it and the easier it becomes. So, hey, get on there. It's not a big deal. You know, start small, start within your group of people that you know, love and trust that will be there for you and then just grow from there. And the more often that you do it, like Linda was saying, being consistent, it really helps you to get that practice in. And I don't I don't even know. Well, after 2020, like this is how we talk to everyone now. But yeah. I mean, it just, it's second nature for me to talk to a camera. In fact, sometimes I forget to talk to people. So <laughs> <laughs> Get out there, be perfectly imperfect and start using Livestream to build your trust and credibility with your audience. Grace from Restream, thank you for joining us. This has been amazing. I am absolutely excited to have a chat with you. And I'm so glad that you have been, you know, ended your very long day talking to us about Restream. Oh. It was my pleasure. This was the best way to end the day. I was, I've been so excited for this uh, ever since I woke up this morning. So. Beautiful. <laughs> Guys, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.